Good morning, everyone. We now would like to start Climate Citizens Assembly, a practical workshop focusing on regional case studies from Japan and the UK. I shall serve as a moderator for the morning. I'm Ishikawa from Aegis. Thank you for your attendance today. Well then, on behalf of the organizer, I would like to invite Dr. Professor Amikami, Nagoya University, to give the opening remarks. Over to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mikami from Nagoya University. Today's workshop is hosted by IGES, um, Institute of Global Environmental Strategies, and IDEP, Institute uh, for Dialogue of Environmental Policy. And this is the grant need for the Scientific Research Project on um, climate democracy. I serve as a representative. Thank you very much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to attend this practical workshop. Now, after the spread of this uh, Climate Citizens Assembly, it's been five years since 2020, Climate Citizens Assembly has been held in more than dozens of regions and communities. Uh, Climate Citizens Assembly is no need to explain it to today's participants. However, uh, randomly selected citizens and from the general public to deliberate on climate change measures and make policy recommendations based on the sufficient information and come up with the policy recommendation. There has to be the wide base consensus in order to materialize this change and in order to facilitate this, uh, this climate citizens assemblies is attracting much expectations um, in Europe as well as here in Japan. Now, when the climate citizens assembly starts to be utilized, uh, the approaches varies depending on the regions and even within the same country. Uh, there are different approaches taken. Now, I'm doing the research as well as the practice of the Climate Citizens Assemblies. I've been involved in success in, inclusive of the run-up to the actual implementation of the use of this Climate Citizens Assemblies. It's not that easy to put into the manual. Now, this is Climate Citizens Assembly, this is one of the tools, has to make the best use of these tools, has to be discussed by the stakeholders in the rest respective uh, communities and this uh, process uh, is meaningful uh, it may sound as a roundabout way of doing so but uh, this is instrumental uh, in fostering the collaborations in the respective community um, there may be some people who have already exchanged and hosting uh, this assembly and those who might have already involved in such assemblies as participants, collaborators, as well as those willing uh, to be a part in the future uh, days. In order to have an opportunity, uh, we hope to come up for a meaningful a way to have this Climate Citizens Assembly. So that is intended why we are holding this workshop. In doing so, we thought that there will be much to be gained if we could learn from UK because they are more advanced and we can discuss and learn about the similarity as well as the differences between UK and Japan. To this end, um, we invited a Professor Stephen Elstop from the Newcastle University. A Professor Elstop has been deeply involved in advising and evaluating the citizens' assemblies as a researcher from the very beginning. He is one of the leading experts of the climate citizens' assemblies in UK and in Europe. Well, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come to Japan, Professor Elstab. We also have another uh, panelist, the leader of the Sustainable Carbon and Climate Change team um, from UK, uh, Ms. Uh, Maggie Bonstadt, even though there is a nine-hour time difference. And she will mainly join us during the discussion part in the second half. I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Ms. Musanket as well. Now, until noon, uh, you will listen into the lectures, report, and share the examples of domestic and international assemblies. And in the afternoon, we would like to discuss how we can make more meaningful use of the assembly in Japan in the future. This will be a long day, so please be relaxed, lay back, and enjoy.
participating without any formalities. Last but not least, I would like to thank the IJES as well as the IDEP for their joint effort in organizing and making uh, this has been possible. Japan, UK, mutual learning and climate assemblies and climate democracy, as well as the workshop before and after today. In holding this, on top of Kakehi uh, granting aid for scientific research, um, there is a support coming from Daiwa Anglo Japanese Foundations as well as the Great Britain Sasakawa Foundations. We will hear from Tokorozawa, Atsuki, Zushi, Hayama, uh, Tsukuba, organizers uh, of the assemblies as well as the pre the Kanagawa Prefectural Government, as well as the Pacific Co, uh, which has taken care of the venue and workshop operations, as well as the interpreters, as well as the other administrative supporters. My thanks goes to all these uh, stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Mikami. Next, on behalf of the co-sponsors, from IJ's Institute for Global Environmental Strategies. We are with us, Mr. Takahashi, President of IJ's. Good morning. I am Takahashi, President of IJ's. I'd like to express my appreciation for your participation despite your busy schedule. On behalf of the co-sponsors, I'd like to say a few words to welcome you. As you already know, as to the climate assemblies, the, from 2019 to 2020, the climate assemblies uh, took place in UK and France, and that uh, led to the series of citizens' assemblies in European countries. And they have been making contribution to formulation and implementation of the decarbonization strategies. In the UK, in particular, according to the Declaration on Climate Emergency at the municipality level, the citizens' assemblies were organized and the, as a result, uh, the, the global warming, uh, the, the countermeasures have received a broad range of support. In Japan, as of end of December 2023, in 1,013 municipalities, including Tokyo, Kyoto, and Yokohama, they declared the carbon neutrality by 2050. Meaning that uh, the they cover entire country, and they they are now in the process of formulating the decarbonization strategy and in the process of implementation to achieve uh, such a commitment, uh, somewhat similar to the situation in UK. The Sapporo and Kawasaki uh, were engaged in a kind of the uh, pilot type initiatives, and then Musashino, Tokorozawa, and other cities led uh, the 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 climate uh, assemblies approach uh, at municipality level, as in the case of the UK. And we hope that uh, such activities would spread among other municipalities as well. And therefore, it is considered uh, useful to establish uh, the effective way of implementation as well as provision of information for a climate citizens assembly. At the same time, through such an experience and participation, the citizens are expected to realize the importance of uh, countermeasures for global warming and uh, the, in fact, the such citizens group are now trying to follow up uh, those uh, recommendations that they participated, uh, the, the, which were adopted at the meeting that, that they have adopted. And thus, this represents the change in behavior. Also, this is uh, introduced as the uh, latest innovative approach, according to IPCC 6 report, this is the WG3 report. On the other hand, we see that such climate city citizens assemblies are still in the process of development, and therefore it is essential to uh, share the information about the case studies both in within and outside of Japan. And therefore, this time we have uh, invited Professor Stephen Elstab of Newcastle University, who has been instrumental in climate citizens assembly in the UK at national level as well as at the municipalities and level. And we believe it is quite timely that we have discussion with the participation by the Professor Elstop. And also I'd like to express my appreciation to Professor Mikami of Nagoya University, uh, who uh, first uh, suggested uh, this uh, workshop and also uh, to the, the members of the, the research uh, in possibilities and challenges of climate, uh, the 
democracy in the Japan in Japan Japanese project uh, the members those involved as well thank you very much for your contribution in uh, 2019 I just conducted the questionnaire or oh, the rather interview for the climate uh, citizens uh, assembly in France followed by uh, the climate citizens assembly investigation in UK and France in 2021 and then in Scotland and UK municipalities in 2022 and then in 2023, we conducted investigation on many publics, including climate citizens assemblies. And for 2022, utilizing the research fund, we also conducted the research on various guidances that were produced after the climate citizens assemblies in Europe and introduced those cases to Japan. Such literature studies as well as interview to researchers and practitioners the, for those activities as well as the webinars organizations uh, have been uh, realized thanks to the cooperation with Professor Mikami of Nagoya University, as well as the Institute for Dialogue of Environmental Policy. And also today at this meeting, uh, the, as is represented by the uh, those cities as Kawasaki to Kurosawa, among others, we have dispatched experts to sit citizens' assemblies in Kawasaki to Kurosawa, Zushi, Hayama, Atsugi, and Aoba. And also, we have been involved in planning of uh, such an assembly uh, that will take place in Suginami in Tokyo one week from now on March 20th. We sincerely hope that uh, today's workshop would lead to uh, further invigorating discussion among those concerned so that that will lead to the development of the Climate Citizens Assembly in Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Takahashi. We now would like to invite Professor Stephen Elstad from Newcastle University to give us a keynote presentation entitled Recent Development of Climate Assemblies in the UK and Europe. Professor Elstab, well, let me introduce him before he takes the stage. Uh, he has studied British politics, particularly a participatory and deliberative democracy and its role in environmental policies. He's one of the world's leading experts in the study and practice of climate citizens' assemblies, having led research and evaluations of the UK and climate citizens' assemblies and Scottish climate citizens' assemblies and serving on the oversight panel of the North of Times climate citizens' assemblies and as an advisor of the Dutch government sponsored on climate citizens' assemblies. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to introduce Professor Elstab to everyone and I am also looking forward to his presentation. And over to you, Professor Elstab. Thank you very much. Thank you to Professor Mikami. Thank you to IGES for organizing today's workshop. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm excited to be here. Thank you all for coming. I'm looking forward to hearing more about climate assemblies in Japan uh, today. I'm going to focus on recent developments in Europe. So I'll start by saying why I think climate assembly is an important thing. Um, what's the logic behind them? What are they? Um, I'll then look at the trends that have been happening in Europe um, and conclude by drawing on some lessons and maybe reflecting on where we may be heading in this area. So the first thing is to, to start with public engagement in climate uh, in general. Um, the public have been rendered too much as spectators in climate change debates, dominated by politicians, scientists, industry. In particular, certain groups are completely underrepresented uh, in these debates uh, almost entirely. And this is a concern because public engagement on climate change can uh, increase public understanding of the problems caused by climate change, give stronger public consent for the policies required to address climate change, can enable more ambitious policy making, and stimulate more climate sensitive behavior change amongst the public. Ultimately, it can lead to more legitimate and just decisions in climate policy. In sum, there's a growing consensus that we're not gonna be able to address the problem of climate change in a meaningful way without engaging the public also in a meaningful way. However, this isn't as easy as it may sound on the face of it. There are significant problems with political participation and political 
uh, public engagement. These problems are more or less universal. They may uh, be variations, but the general features are there. Um, I want to identify three of these. Firstly, political participation is demographically skewed. We get the usual suspects, the most politically active, the most engaged, attending and participating at the exclusion of everybody else. This is problematic as there, there's structural features around who participates and who doesn't. The structure around race, gender, age, class, and most of all, education. The more educated you are, the more likely you are uh, to be politically engaged. Many people are uninformed uh, about issues such as climate change and climate action, uh, often rationally so. They know that their opinion isn't going to make a difference, so why bother becoming informed? And yet we still ask people their opinion, often through opinion polls, for example. They may know little about the issue, they may have given it very little thought, and yet that the opinion is still recorded. It's an unauthentic opinion for those reasons. And finally, those who do engage are often close-minded. They're the most politically active, they're stakeholders. They've already made up their minds. They're not gonna listen to new information. They're not gonna take on board other people's views that differ from their own. When we talk about politics, when we talk about policy, when we talk about issues like climate change with people, it tends to be in our own networks. We tend to be talking to people who we already agree with, who are like-minded, and therefore we don't get to hear the other side. There's not just problems with um, public engagement, there's also limitations of representative democracy to deal with climate change. This suggests we cannot rely on this format of government alone in order to address it. These limitations are structural, by which I mean it doesn't matter which political party might be in power, it doesn't matter which particular politicians may be governing us, these issues and, and structural features will still remain. This is because they are governed by electoral incentives. As a result, they're trying to deal with immediate public opinion. We deal in short-term political cycles. They have to uh, try and get good press at the time, so they follow media narratives. They're susceptible to lobbying um, from uh, various different industries whose interests may, may not be to be addressing climate change right now. And ultimately, all this leads to climate delay discourses, kicking the can down the road. It's something we can do later. We don't need to act now. Ultimately, the problems are that in our electoral systems, long term issues remain unaddressed at the expense of short term issues and means climate change is not being addressed. To give you an example, um, the picture here is of uh, Rishi Sunak, um, the current prime minister of the UK. This is a photo from when he was the Chancellor of the Exchequer, holding up a green um, briefcase at COP26, which is in Glasgow in the UK, trying to show that he's an uh, environmentally sensitive um, politician. However, as Prime Minister, we have not seen that. He's been roaming back on a lot of the climate legislation that had already been introduced, for example, new licenses for drilling for oil in the North Sea has, have just been granted. Uh, he's trying to put clear distance between him and the Labour Party ahead of the next election in order to try and win the next election. The Labour Party have been moving more in the climate agenda. So these problems, and this is why people are increasingly turning to climate assembly to be part of the solution. And I think that can, they can only ever be part of the solution. Our expectations must be moderated. Um, but what are they? So uh, firstly, they're a type of citizens assembly. This is a bit like taking the legal jury that we have, um, but extending it to policy. And it's a, a citizen assembly that focuses on some aspect of climate governance. They take a representative or diverse sample of the public. Uh, they do this through a combination of random and stratified sampling. The key thing is to create a microcosm of the, the population. So the, the participants in this assembly are um, like the public at large in important ways. Um, 
it's based upon a, a lottery. Um, this means, if done well, that everybody has an equal chance of being selected. This is very important to the legitimacy of the process. And it's based upon long-term research into public opinion, which suggests we don't need to ask the whole population to understand what public opinion is if our sample is reliable. Hence the photo of a chef. If you're making a soup, you don't eat the whole pot of soup and then go, oh, actually, it did need a bit more salt and pepper. You just try a teaspoonful and are able to judge whether it needs more seasoning or not. Good practice to, is to try and overcome barriers to political participation I mentioned earlier, to get people who aren't normally politically engaged involved. So they may be paid for their time, accommodation provided, travel provided, uh, childcare provided. Once recruited, they receive balanced information, usually from a combination of expert and advocate witnesses. The idea here is that they're exposed to a range of views on the issue to which they're considering. Their discussions are facilitated to try and promote deliberation amongst the participants, to be inclusive, make sure everybody gets a chance to have a say, to ensure the discussions are respectful, that people listen to each other, and that they justify their proposals. This results then in a set of policy recommendations. And there's often, with climate assemblies, an institutional link attached to government or parliament, for example, and this increases the chances of policy uptake. So why is this then meant to help us address climate change? Well, it's they're inclusive processes. This means we get different types of people who have different views on the issue. Um, in the UK, examples, for example, they, they always um, sample on different views on climate change. So we have um, those who are deeply concerned about climate change, those who are climate change deniers, and a spectrum in between. However, the, because they've been selected through lot, they are not stakeholders. They're therefore much more likely to approach the process and the issues with an open mind, to listen to others' views uh, and to listen and to consider new information. Good conditions then are created for deliberation and learning. And this can then, and research suggests this does happen, be reflected in their change in opinions through the process. Moreover, these changes in opinions is then reflected in the recommendations which they reach at the end of the process. So the argument is, is in comparison to the, the political system that I was describing earlier, there's more chance of long-term issues like um, climate change being a priority in a process like this. So that's the overview. Moving on now to focus specifically on uh, the European experience. So the OECD have been tracking deliberative processes and um, the type of issues that they consider. As you can see from this graph, the environment has been the number one issue. So this is broader than climate assemblies. It's not necessarily about climate, but the environment in general. And these are deliberative processes in general as well, not as let's say specifically citizens assemblies or climate assemblies. But it shows that this is the most, one of the most popular themes uh, on which to hold these sort of processes. And indeed, we've seen um, a big increase in the use of climate assemblies um, across Europe. Here's some of the logos of different examples from the UK, the Global Assembly, Ireland, Scotland, Germany, Denmark, for example. And Kanoka, the Knowledge Network on Climate Assemblies, if you're not aware of this network already, I would very much encourage you to, um, to, to, to join and, and to look at their website. And on that website, they're trying to track uh, the instances of different climate assemblies. And here's a snapshot then of Europe. The red dots are um, local, municipal um, climate assemblies, and the yellow ones are national climate assemblies. So we've seen a big increase in these um, uh, across Europe. Um, not, they're happening in Northern Europe, Western Europe, uh, Southern Europe and Eastern Europe. It really is coming a, a full European phenomenon. 
So why are we um, seeing this trend? Firstly, climate is more on the agenda. The IPCC have now told us that we're unlikely to keep temperatures below 1.5 degrees uh, and we'll have to suffer the consequences of that. Um, therefore, climate is going to be increasingly on the agenda. There, in established uh, democracies, we are seeing uh, a significant decline in trust in government, in politicians, in established institutions, in parliament, in the traditional institutions of uh, representative democracy. As a result, people are looking for alternatives. Alongside this, there's been a perceived success around the Irish citizens' assemblies. They've had a climate assembly, but they've had a series of citizens' assemblies over a number of years now, looking at a range of different issues. Most notably, the citizens' assembly on gay marriage, marriage equality and abortion. Uh, the recommendations were taken up in a referendum by the Irish pu public. Uh, this got a huge amount of publicity and people really started to get interested in um, citizens' assemblies as a result of this. Social movements like Extinction Rebellion have been very vocal. One of their demands has been to have more climate assemblies, and this has been a key part of the protest. Uh, the bottom picture there is um, members of Extinction Rebellion. They've managed to get inside the House of Commons in the UK Parliament, uh, and as you can see, they're calling for uh, Citizens' Assembly. There's also now an industry of public engagement practitioners across Europe, um, and when public authorities go to them and say, right, we want to run a, a public engagement process around the climate issue, they're increasingly saying, well, why not a climate assembly? This is the model. So this has become the preferred model of, amongst practitioners, and they're pushing this as well. And this is also contributing to climate assembly diffusion across Europe. I think there's also a feature of the proximity of different municipalities within countries and also nation states within Europe. So there's a literature on policy transfer. If a particular um, political authority adopts a certain policy, it's quite often we see the neighbours to that political authority adopt the same policy. I think what we're seeing here then is democratic innovation transfer. Um, a good example here is London uh, from the UK. Um, so Camden was the first London borough to hold a climate assembly. But then if you watch the spread, so many London boroughs now have had them. So it's a bit like, well, they've done it. We should do it. Then the next one along thinks, well, hang on, both our neighbours have now had a climate assembly. We need to do this. Uh, and so this is co contributing to the spread. I also think one of the motivations behind the increase in climate assemblies is that um, public authorities are trying to increase, uh, influence the public around climate change. They see public opinion as a stopping block for um, more progressive policies around this area. And they're hoping that through climate assemblies, uh, they can change public opinion. So they are trying to influence the public, I think, rather than necessarily creating avenues to be influenced by them. So that's why I think it's happening. Um, what are the key features of and trends with, with respect to climate assemblies um, within Europe? So I'm, 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 I'm uh, going to generalise a little bit here because there will be outliers from these key points, but uh, these are the general features. Uh, the picture there is from Scotland's climate assembly, which was the first online um, assembly. So firstly, well, I think we've seen a, a familiar citizen assembly format being used um, across most of these cases, which conforms to the features that I outlined in my earlier definition, which I won't repeat again. We've seen the focus is primarily, almost exclusively on mitigation rather than adaptation. The scope of these climate assemblies is very broad. How do we reach net zero? How do we address climate change? And they tend to be one-off ad hoc processes rather than something more continuous and permanent. What have been the achievements of this trend of climate assemblies in Europe? Again, this is a generalization, but firstly, they are 
recruiting successfully diverse groups, not just in demographics, but in terms of attitudes on climate change as well. Inclusive and respectful deliberation around climate change is being achieved in most cases. Just take a moment to think about that, because remember the point I mentioned earlier. In these forums, you have people who don't believe climate change is happening, people who are deeply concerned about it, and the scope of opinion in between. And yet they're sitting down, discussing these issues respectfully with each other, which I think is a strong achievement. The participants' knowledge on climate change and decarbonisation increases through the process. Uh, their opinions also change about the achievability of net zero. They become more positive that it, we can do this. And I'm not a climate scientist. I haven't analysed the recommendations around whether they would actually achieve the targets of net zero if implemented. But I don't think you need to be a climate scientist to when you review the recommendations to see that they'd certainly take us further uh, towards doing that than the status quo. So those are the similarities. There is, of course, variation across a whole continent like Europe. There's bound to be. Um, so what are those variations? So I mentioned the remits uh, tend to be broad, which is the case, but there are still uh, fluctuations here. So, you know, there's some that focus just on energy or transportation. Um, and the agents who decide the remit varies a lot in these instances as well. Sometimes it's come from civil society and bottom-up climate assemblies, often from government or from parliament. Um, the advisory boards used to um, advise on the process often determine the remit as well. And in some instances, the assembly members themselves have been able to at least influence, if not determine, their remit. There's a, a huge variety in the evidence and information giving formats across these processes um, in terms of the scope, the focus, um, but also the, the, the avenues and the formats for delivering that information. Uh, similarly, process design and the styles of facilitation vary greatly across these processes. They, the duration of them is also a, a big variation. Some are just a, a, a couple of weekends, a couple of sessions, and others have lasted months to a year. And as a result, the budget of these processes varies considerably as well, as does how they're governed. Sometimes it's civil servants from the um, government. Sometimes it's um, clerks from parliament. Sometimes it's the democratic practitioners themselves. Sometimes the, the assembly members are allowed to self-govern. It's been climate experts and it's also been stakeholders or really a combination of these in various different degrees in various different cases. They vary considerably in terms of the levels of publicity that they receive and therefore the levels of public awareness of these processes. To give you a couple of examples, France, the very first climate assembly in Europe, was highly publicised and... Um, the French public's awareness of the process was also very high as a result. In contrast, the UK, uh, Climate Assembly UK, which started just a couple of months after the, the French one um, and therefore was the second national uh, climate assembly uh, in Europe, uh, the public were largely unaware of this process. They vary in terms of the level of um, institutional uh, integration. This is because some are organised by civil society and come from civil society. The German Climate Assembly being a good example there. And others are organised top down, such as uh, the French case I just mentioned and the UK case, cases in Denmark, for example. Um, sometimes they're integrated with Parliament, sometimes with government, in France, directly to the President, etc., etc. There's variation there. And as a result, there's been huge variation in the policy take-up of the recommendations coming from these climate assemblies. Um, from really no influence whatsoever at all, no take-up whatsoever at all, uh, to high levels of take-up and everything in between. And I picked this picture out because I think it really shows sort of the issues around institutional integration. So this is, that's the picture of Liz Truss on the side of that bus. She was uh, briefly the Prime Minister of the, the UK. 
Um, this isn't. This is a hoax done by um, Extinction Rebellion. Um, it says there, let Britain decide, I promise the Citizens' Assembly to fix climate and costs. So this is all part of the social movement protest. But that is a bus parked right outside uh, the UK Parliament. So you've got the social movement, you've got government, and you've got Parliament all encapsulated in, in, into one photo there. So in terms of... Um, institutional integration. The suggestion is increasingly, in order to solve this problem of partial uptake and, and often no uptake at all of recommendations um, from climate assemblies, is, is, is to move away from this one-off one ad hoc processes that we have completely dominated the European experience so far. By giving them a bit more permanence, embedding them into our political system, institutionalizing them, uh, this can give them a bit more gravitas and make it harder for politicians to simply ignore and brush them under the carpet. Along these lines, then, we've recently seen uh, the Brussels Permanent Climate Assembly. It started just over a year ago. It has 65 to 100 assembly members with an annual rotation. Um, each assembly will dress a sub-theme of uh, Brussels climate policy and the agenda is what the first agenda was selected by the organizers and the subsequent agendas are, uh, are selected by the assembly members from the previous rotation. So far the first one looked at habitat, the second one has looked at food and there's a commission that's going to monitor the government response to the recommendations. So I think this is an exciting development um, research on these this case is still emerging, so it's a space we're still watching to see um, what the effect and influence of this is. So that leads me to the lessons I think we can draw from the European experience and also um, maybe future directions. In the future directions, these are in some are predictions and some are things that I think need to happen, but um, I'm not necessarily confident that will. 12 points in all. Firstly, I think the number of cases we've had in Europe, there's sufficient evidence to conclude the citizen assembly model works on climate. Um, it shows that the public can, under good conditions, under the conditions provided in the citizens assembly, meaningfully engage with this issue of climate change, which many people were skeptical of before. It shows that the climate assembly model is transferable across many contexts, different levels of governance it works. We've had from the local all the way up to the global, uh, different countries, different continents, as we've seen it now emerge here in Japan and different cultures. This diffusion um, around the globe needs to continue. As we know, it, we've, it, it, it started here, but it'd be great to see this spread across Asia, uh, Africa, Latin America, North America as well. We need more transnational climate assemblies. We've had the global assembly. There's been a, a trans-European climate assembly. Uh, we need more of this. Climate change, as we know, is a global problem. It needs a global response. It needs global coordination if it's going to be addressed. Uh, transnational climate assemblies can make a contribution to that. We see that there's significant challenges with climate assemblies with scope and time, the combination between them. Lots of the problems in my research around climate assemblies in Europe is because of the mismatch between the scope of the remit given to the assembly members to address and the amount of time that they've been given to address it. The time that you give the assembly members either to fit the scope or vice versa, the scope that you give them needs to meet the time available. And that's not been happening. That needs to change. As I said, the, the overwhelming focus of climate assemblies in Europe so far has been on mitigation. Adaptation is an important issue. As I said, it seems unlikely that we're now going to keep temperatures below 1.5 degrees. Changes to our climate are coming and that are going to affect our lives and we need to know how to adapt that. I think climate assemblies can help, but we uh, we need to think 
more clearly about how we can include uh, adaptation and also systems issues, uh, systemic issues within climate assemblies. I'd like to see climate assemblies more democratised, the assembly members given more control and more say over the remits that they get to address and the information that they think they need in order to address that. These things are largely determined for them at present. But by enabling and empowering them to decide these themselves, the outcomes of the climate assemblies will be a more authentic expression of what they think. Climate assemblies alone are not going to solve the problem. Um, they're insufficient alone. At the end of the day, no matter how representative a sample you gather, it's still small numbers of people, 150 to 100 people, say. Um, so they need to be engage the public more broadly. Um, in order to do this, we, um, we need to um, look at other routes, you know, to allow in the public to have a say on the agenda, to input information into the process, to endorse in the recommendations at the end are different ways we can involve the public. We need to integrate climate assemblies with existing public engagement around climate as well, routes. Uh, and we need to massively improve the communication around climate assemblies. Um, the variation here about whether the public know that they're happening or not can't continue. So we, we've invested so much attention and so much resources, and rightly so, into the design of the assembly itself to make sure it's high quality and robust. That's great. But we now need to apply the same attention and the same resources to how we communicate the climate assembly to the public as well. Ultimately, I think we need to institutionalize and embed climate assemblies uh, into political systems as we're seeing it happen in, in Brussels. We need rules on when we have one, how they're governed and what happens to the outcomes at the end. If we do this, there'll be less of a political tool. My concern is that unless these things happen, um, this will just be a trend that it will dissipate rather than being a meaningful change uh, to the climate agenda. However, I'm excited to see climate assemblies come into Japan. Japan is famous for its innovation, its attention to detail, and I'm seeing that every day uh, in my visit. So if anybody uh, can take this format and improve it, develop it, innovate it, uh, it's Japan. So like the handing of the torch at the end of the Olympics from Europe, over to you, Japan. Thank you very much. If anyone is interested in hearing and reading more about my work on climate assemblies, here's some resources. Maybe most interested in the reports on Climate Assembly UK, Scotland's Climate Assembly, the Global Assembly. The reports are long, but the executive summaries are short. And I'm very excited to announce that there'll be a book with the Goiter Press on Climate Assemblies, open access, published either later this year or, or next. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Professor Elsa. That was a very uh, insightful presentation for our participants here in Japan. So next, we will have uh, the first report. That will be the recent developments of climate assemblies in Japan. Uh, we will have uh, Professor uh, Naruki Mikami um, from Nagoya University, Climate Democracy Project, and IDEP. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Elsa, for your presentation. So. Um, I am the uh, representative of the Climate Democracy uh, Project and also a part-time director for IDEP as well. From my side, I'd like to uh, talk about the recent developments of climate assemblies in Japan uh, for about 10 minutes. Now, after myself, uh, we'll have uh, Ms. Motoko Inada, director of IDEP make a presentation and she uh, will be talking uh, she'll be making a presentation or report on a unique development in Kanagawa prefecture where different types of climate assemblies have been held in several areas since 2021 and for me i would like to talk about what's been uh, happening in japan also uh, touching upon the background and the history as well 
Now, the climate assemblies uh, in uh, so the climate assembly it uses the methodology of mini publics, which uses random sampling to make a microcosm of society and and applies it to the discussion for measures around a uh, climate change. Now, this mini uh, publics, this has actually um, been in place for the last uh, 50 years in uh, North America and Europe. And in Japan, um, starting from the late 1990s, uh, it has been applied in uh, areas uh, such as, uh, like the mini publics, that is, um, in areas to discuss about environmental uh, issues and talk about measures there. So that's been taking place in Japan as well. Now, this slide uh, gives a history of the mini publics application in Japan. So those uh, who be interested in public, uh, in, excuse me, science and technology policy, um, so a uh, one method of many publics is what we call consensus conference. And in 1998, uh, under the theme of gene therapy, the consensus conference has um, taken place. So this was, uh, so to say, the first many publics in Japan. Now in the 2000s, um, so we call it a shimin togikai, which is something unique to Japan. Uh, it's a it's a mini publics. So that has taken place from 2000 onwards and from 2006, 2007. So the prefectural government of uh, Hokkaido has been an official um, sponsor and uh, there's uh, the, and, and a consensus conference was made under the theme of um, genetically modified crops and actually has been used to revise the prefecture's regulations there. And um, forward, so it would be 2012, so that would be the year after the Fukushima nuclear power plant uh, accident. And actually the J Japanese central uh, government, uh, there was a mini uh, publics uh, where we'd be discussing about the environmental policies for people who have been randomly se selected. Now, just going a little bit back in time, so in 2009 and 2015, um, there was a uh, mini publics all around the world held simultaneously. Um, and uh, the discussion was reported, the results of the discussion was reported to the UN, uh, what we call the worldwide view. And actually in Japan, um, in 2009, it was in Kyoto, in 2015, uh, this uh, worldwide view was held in uh, Tokyo. And so in J Japan, so the reason why we can actually see movements around climate uh, assembly in Japan as well is because of the experience that we've had in the past uh, quarter century. Now, with that um, background, so the movement of uh, having or something like a climate assembly in Japan uh, started, that movement started around uh, seven or eight uh, years ago. And as you can see uh, here, um, so myself and uh, Professor uh, Emory Isan, we uh, talk uh, about, uh, so the uh, application of uh, mini publics to apply it to the very long-term uh, risk uh, issues, we decided to set up uh, a research project. Uh, this was in 2017 and in 2018, so there's been a, um, a trend research on carbon neutral transition and uh, climate assemblies in uh, Europe. So this was from 2018. Now in 2020, so our group, uh, so so basically to jointly organize with Sapporo City as part of designing climate citizens assembly for transition. This is a Kakenhi project and 2021. Um, and uh, this will be there will be a presentation on this uh, about the decarbonization cost Saki citizens assembly and and I just side and as um, so Takahashi has mentioned I just study and monthly research uh, meetings on climate assemblies in Europe started from around 2021 and in 2022. Uh, so it would be Musashino City in Tokyo Prefecture and in Tokorozawa City, if, um, Saitama Prefecture, um, Saito will be talking about. Um, we have had the first uh, climate assembly uh, where the, um, the administration would be officially uh, hosting it. And for this fiscal year, um, the next week um, from the holidays, we'll have um, Suginami Ward of Tokyo. Um, there'll be 
um, and including civilian infrastructure, there would be climate assemblies in 10 um, uh, areas nationwide. And we have some sort of detailed uh, sort of maps on what kind, what uh, municipalities will actually um, that. And we have about 100 people participating uh, today. And of the 15 areas, I think, 13 or 14 climate assemblies. I think um, the uh, people who'd be involved in those uh, assemblies uh, are participating today. So I hope uh, you have time to have dialogue after that. Now, so when we look at the 15 uh, climate uh, citizens assemblies that we've had in the last three years, uh, the, it's very diverse. You can see different organizers and diverse developments. So I've roughly um, put them in three buckets. One would be what I would call local government initiated or hosting by the local government. For uh, example, the Tokorozawa City um, movement on a zero carbon city. So basically, it's uh, administration led or um, the government led, and the results are actually reflected in the policies for that municipality. The second type would uh, be what I would call citizen led and collaborative. So basically, uh, there'd be um, the citizens group take a lead and organizing these assemblies in collaboration with other actors and the results of the citizens initiatives uh, would be reflected. And uh, Atsugi uh, cl uh, Climate Citizen Assembly, um, there'd be a presentation would be a typical of that. The third uh, would be um, just meaning as a research institution led uh, development. So basically, it's a new uh, model of a uh, climate citizen assembly. And and it uh, there will be a presentation on that. So Kanagawa uh, Climate uh, Assembly in Zushihayama, and also uh, those in Tsukuba, which Tokuda-san will be um, presenting, which would be more like research institution-led and developmental. Now in uh, Japan, so it's um, only been three to four years, but the reason why uh, Japan has been able to utilize uh, these uh, climate uh, assemblies is uh, of course uh, because of the efforts of those who have been participating, but I think it is a result of uh, the, um, the accumulation of the experience and that uh, the, the public, the administration and researchers uh, that experienced over the last two decades have been able to be uh, used. And it's very important that the municipalities policies, regulations has been actually using that to reflect that. And, and I think it's very uh, important that we see movements that it's going to be leveraged even further. Now, at the same time, now one thing that we need to think about is can citizens discuss with a sense of ownership uh, what policies are needed to avoid uh, things like greenhouse gas emissions, um, their lives and work, and create real policy and social impacts is something that uh, would need to be uh, seen. And also, talking about uh, greenhouse gas emission policies. And so can the developments lead to expanding participation and deliberation in these climate and energy policy at the national level and to make that or lead that to democratic innovation in Japanese society is something we would need to see as we move forward. Now we have a whole day today in the morning. Um, so uh, we'd have Professor Elsa uh, talk about the uh, example in uh, Europe or the UK, but we would uh, now be listening to the examples in uh, Japan, what we've been doing. And so we'll be sharing that um, with the uh, presentations and in the afternoon, we'll have a discussion session. And in the discussion, uh, you'd be looking at uh, we'd be doing case studies based on the presentation that was made. So what are the outcomes and results to date? And uh, from that, what kind of issues and challenges have been identified? Uh, so we'd like you to talk about that and based on that. And uh, you can see at the bottom of the slide. So how to more meaningfully leverage climate assemblies in Japan. So that uh, would be something that we would like to uh, discuss as a group. So thank you very much with that. Uh, floor to you, Ms. Inada, thank you. Next, report to progress status of climate citizens held in municipal uh, cities in Kanagawa Prefecture. We have Ms. Inada, director of IDEP. Over to you, Ms. Inada. I'm Inada with IDEP. 
Uh, let me share with you the policy development on in Kanagawa Prefecture. Uh, in my report, as shown here, these are the organizations or the individuals uh, that was involved in the discussions as well as the implementations. And I will, my report will contain the excerpt of these discussions. Uh, these are the venues of the Climate Citizens Assembly in Kanagawa. Now, there is a decarbonation Kawasaki Citizens Assembly, which uh, took place in uh, 2021. And in 2023, Atsugi City and Populations Kanagawa uh, Climate Citizens Assembly, Adushi Hayama also held the assembly, and also Aoba uh, is holding the assembly. They had the third session, and also uh, by May, they will be holding the fifth session. Later on, I will come back to talk about this point. Let me briefly talk about the Kawasaki Citizens Assembly, focusing on the members. Uh, this was the second uh, city, and five people participated, and seven people were in executive uh, committee, and there were several uh, grants funds that was utilized as well as the research funds and IDEP. Uh, was also invited, I was not the director, and also Kawasaki's uh, center to stop the global warming was also involved. Uh, it, even though the Kawasaki city was involved, but this was uh, led by the private sector, and seven, seven items uh, was uh, summarized based upon the citizens and proposal. And for uh, this was addressed alongside uh, with the policy of formulation. And also, the proposal was submitted to the city council. Um, five online meetings were held, one face to face meeting was held. And also, uh, there were different themes addressed, and general discussions were held. And after the discussion, a um, platform was established along with working on the public relationship, evaluation, and so forth. So, these are the three things that was addressed. Next, for each localities, you will hear the different Report and presentation to be delivered in 2023. The three assemblies are background is next topic that I'd like to address. These three was held as a Kanagawa prefectural project in outsourcing actions of decarbonization awareness and permeations of the young and people and local communities. So under this project, uh, there were three assemblies held. Uh, it's the decarbonization strategy headquarters and office of the prefectural government. And I just and I were the co hosting the event. And the purpose is as written, strengthening the awareness and permeations of the uh, concerning decarbonization led by the young people. And also, this shall lead to the behavioral change in decarbonization. And there were three main uh, pillars. Well, first of all, decarbonization education for the high school students, as also the workshop for university students and young working adults, as well as planning and operations of the regional workshop for regional decarbonization. But I would like to focus on is that the planning and operations of the regional workshop. The objective here is that uh, many different people shall uh, participate and hold a workshop so many people will be able to uh, participate along with the collaborations with the local communities and this shall be the sustainable program now as part of this uh, program Ushi Hayama as well as Yokohama Aoba Atsugi um, they've been providing support at the Atsugi it was also holding the assembly as well. So three regions uh, did hold the assemblies. And now there are some unique characteristics of this workshop. We took the Climate Citizens Assembly a format so that the deliberations can take place among the citizens. Next, as for rolling out of these assemblies, first, Kawasaki. Citizens Assembly. This was the second of its kind in Japan, and this was private sector led, and also Kawasaki's uh, policy formulation should reflect the opinions of the public. So that was the objective of holding the assembly. And also, the operators, the organizers, wanted to further cultivate Japan versions of the climate assembly. So this uh, can be a good model uh, for. A subsequent assembly had to be held in Japan. There were so many people participated after the meeting. 
uh, some uh, volunteers uh, follow up on the citizens and proposals utilizing the platform and utilizing the platform uh, activities is underway to continue with the decarbonization effort. And I mentioned some of the three local government assemblies. To assume of the business planning of the Kanagawa prefecture, it was understood that the awareness and behavior regarding decarbonization has not been penetrated in the uh, local community. We have to create the venue with the participations of the local citizens. Uh, we believe that will be a very important step for decarbonization effort. And through the planning, the three local government have came up with this very practical workshop. Uh, therefore, this is the unique characteristic of that. Uh, what the Panama Prefecture is aiming at is not just the climate assembly, depending on the needs, depending on the circumstances, uh, various challenges need to be addressed. In order to provide the forum as a policy package, uh, the prefecture is aiming to implement this on a sustainable basis. Now, uh, by holding multiple climate citizens assemblies, uh, what we can expect for this further spread, the Kanagawa Prefecture holding the several assemblies. For one thing, uh, Kanagawa Prefecture uh, is encouraging the decarbonization effort to be made on a wide basis, and also through information collections as well as provisions of information in the local uh, government. Uh, people have identified the new pieces of information as well as uh, there are some lo unique local uh, informations or identifications of the local expert. And we have uh, promoted those um, information collections. In other words, uh, we now have a stronger uh, local community involvement and so also by having the multiple assemblies at the different locations uh, before the meeting, during the meeting, after the meeting, there was a very active exchange of information sharing of the lessons sharing of the challenges and people get together to exchange opinions that continued even after the assembly the climate climate uh, citizens assemblies is the venue to deliberate uh, taking the form of the mini publics and also to publicize what they have discussed that was what is aiming that however the participant deepen uh, the interest in the decarbonization and also they may not be a part of the local activities in the past. However, if they become more active, then we will be able to further uh, expand this uh, movement and involve a larger amount of people. And these are the summary of meetings by FI 2023. And this is just, just observed uh, questions. Do you think it was meaningful to participate at the citizen assembly? Uh, Kawasaki, Atsuki, Zushi, as majority, of the people, namely, and 90% said that they either strongly agree or agree. Would you like to participate in activities aimed at achieve the initiatives proposed by the city proposal? Is the next question about 50% to 70% responded affirmatively. So those participated in the assembly, not just the participations, but after the assembly, they are more than willing to participate in the subsequent event. And quite a large number of the people was willing to participate based on these points. This slide, well, first of all, please focus on this yellow box. What is the outcome of Japan's Climate Citizens Assembly? Will first of all the policies of the local communities or the impact to the democracy may be the outcome? But the citizens will take the lead and reflect their voices to the policies and also the citizens as a, a sovereign being hold their own opinions and voices, not just that. However, there is a direct and indirect effect on the decarbonization effort as citizens as a consumer work toward the decarbonization as the stakeholders and to engage in decarbonization activities and citizens as consumers and collaborate within and across local government regions for decarbonization. These are the good outcomes that we been seeing and these will be the outcomes that we can expect in the future. The city of Kawasaki initially, number one, 
against the citizen policy to reflect the voices of the citizens. Uh, that was the primary objective. And then, after completing the assembly, to continue this movement, in order to do that as a platform, they established a platform and started addressing this item too. But Kanagawa Prefecture, the three local government assemblies, of they initially aimed for item two as a part of the prefectural government um, to further widen the scope of the participants. And so the individual started to change, which shall lead to item one. And that is what we've been witnessing. And also that is a expectation. And this is a very brief summary. Kanagawa prefectures and policy with regard to decarbonization related policies is done at the prefectural level, but this is the first attempt, on, at least within Japan. In other words, this is a deliberation related, a first of its attempt at the prefectural level. And this is positions within the framework of decarbonization and trying to further promote. And for that purpose, this was the first very challenging attempt done at the prefectural level. Yagista san said those words. So this is such a challenging attempt. Now, in the climate change countermeasures, the local government initiative is very important. They were very active holding events, assemblies at different locations. All these are good fora that we can learn a lot from. I am glad to see a very active universe taking place. This is such a good thing, but uh, climate change is not happening in a certain area, certain sector. So broader cooperations and collaborations is also necessary. Uh, therefore, uh, the venue of the decarbonization should further expand, not just to cover the specific area. Uh, and kind of the prefecture's attempt uh, can be seen as a new initiative. Now, I talked about the three assemblies of the three local government, not just to reflect the voices and of the citizens, but through their participation, they now have a sense of ownership. And within the community, uh, they it can act as a new leader in promoting decarbonizations in their respective local communities. At least that is the expectation. Back in 2021, when Kawasaki held the first assembly, and there were subsequent assembly being held, not just in Kanagawa prefecture, but I'm sure that other prefectures, other localities that face emphasis on this particular aspect of bring, bringing and fostering the new leaders. So this is leading to the good feature of Japan's climate assemblies. I shared with you uh, of the cases from Kanagawa Prefecture. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. From here on, we'll hear actual words on the citizens' assemblies uh, that are held uh, throughout Japan. The first speaker is from Tokozawa City. This citywide zero carbon citizen assembly is going to be reported by Mr. Nobuhiro Saito of Tokozawa City, who is in charge of promoting the citywide zero carbon activities. Now, please. Good morning. As was introduced, I am Saito. I'm from Tokorozawa City. I am very much honored to have this opportunity, thanks to IGES, as well as uh, the those concerned uh, for realizing this event. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your contribution. Now, without further ado, I'd like to begin uh, my explanation about our city's citizens' assembly. Earlier, Professor Mikami explained that uh, the, there is a case of the government-led and uh, Tokorozawa was referred to as such. 
And therefore, the, that's what I'd like to focus on more. That's the government or city hall led. This shows the location of Tokorozawa city. It is uh, next to Tokyo. It takes about half an hour on train from downtown Tokyo, and therefore, it has been uh, developed as a bedroom community with a population of 340,000 or 160,000 households. The size is about 72 square kilometers, as you see here. Tokorozawa city is uh, featured by uh, the beautiful forest, uh, the farmland, as well as residential area, meaning this is a town where the nature and urban function are harmonized. At Tokorozawa city, how we came to establish a citizen's assembly, I'd like to explain about the history or the process. Back to this slide, as I explained, Tokorozawa city has developed as a bedroom community. The big factories, industrial zones are not located within the city. In other words, the carbon dioxide emission from household and the household, in fact, is the major source of the emission of air for, for countermeasures against the, the carbon emission. We have been thinking how we can better address and focus on household emission. For that, we need to change or transform the citizen's lifestyle as well as change of behavior. But to do that, we need to know what are the thoughts held by citizens? We thought uh, we have to start from there, and that was always in our mind of how better to receive the feedback from the citizens. Now, in Europe, climate citizens' assemblies are organized in numerous cases, and then it was led by Sapporo and Kawasaki cities in Japan. And then when the young members of the city hall heard that, they suggested that maybe we can have one. And then the Mr. Yagishita uh, came to uh, approach us. Uh, he is uh, from the uh, EDEP, uh, the Environment uh, the dialogue uh, organization. And then, then Mayor Fujimoto of Tokorozawa stated that they said uh, the consensus of formation in Europe was a topic that he was interested in, and therefore he showed interest in organizing the citizens' assembly here in Tokorozawa as well. The former mayor. Fujimoto showed great interest in climate change, and he wanted to reflect uh, the those uh, issues related to climate change on policies. And that is why the climate uh, change approach in Tokorozawa city is considered as a top-down type of model, but actually it, is, it started from the young, uh, the members of the city hall that first suggested organizing such a uh, the citizens' uh, assembly. And the reason why the, he came up uh, to realize that he was interested in organizing such a climate assembly was that according to the basic plan on the climate and also action plan in Tokorozawa city, uh, they were about to be revised so that timing coincided uh, with uh, the suggestion made for citizens' assembly. And then we thought that was a prime opportunity to reflect the feedback of the citizens into the uh, basic plan for climate change countermeasures. And now about the objective. As you see here, 
we want to see that each uh, one of the participants would consider that the global warming is uh, the issue of their own and share uh, the understanding to be engaged in discussion so that the result of the assembly would be incorporated or uh, the linked to uh, the specific uh, policies as well as revision of the environment, a basic plan on environment as well as the action plan on global warming. So, as Professor Mikami said, uh, this appears as the characteristics of the government led approach. That is, the result of discussion at assembly uh, be reflected on the policies, and then that should be implemented. And that was described as a part of the objective. In other words, this is a commitment to the citizens. In the long history of the municipality administration, the voice of the people would be reflected in the policies, translated into policies. When it is stated as such, you never know what kind of outcome or consequence would be out of the city assembly. And yet, we clearly stated as a commitment that the the result of deliberation would be reflected on the policies. This was never done, and therefore, this was viewed as a new challenge for the city. And that also added another uh, major importance uh, to the citizens assembly. The parties to the citizen assembly who is a sponsor? Is it the city or the NPO or citizens' organizations, citizens' groups, whether to form the steering committee by citizens? The, those different modes were considered. And uh, because uh, it is administrative organization, city is to take leadership and then there was a limit or barrier for citizens to be part of such a planning and operation on the other hand we as a part of the administration are there and therefore if the interest of the administration is presented forefront then that may uh, reduce the significance of citizen participation. And therefore, although it is led by the city, we decided uh, we uh, should be uh, behind as much as possible in operation. We should try to reduce uh, city's interest as much as possible. And also, because uh, the administration is involved, uh, then there are various issues of consent. For instance, decision making is quite because they have to eventually submit the proposal to the mayor. And also, uh, there is uh, the expenses uh, as well as uh, the security related uh, the concern, meaning that the it will take time, we will lack agility. Well, as in the case of the citizen assembly, it is something that is expected to be agile, and therefore uh, they were not uh, quite uh, conducive uh, to the, the the institution that is led by or sponsored by Tokorozawa City. But eventually, we decided that uh, the Tokorozawa City has to be there as a sponsor with a commitment that we are going to incorporate the consequences the, of the deliberation to fulfill a commitment. In other words, the, we thought uh, that was uh, the manifestation of a resolution. And uh, we also received the cooperation from Waseda University because Waseda University campus is located within Tokorozawa City. Uh, thus, academic findings and information were offered. And then, Institute for Dialogue for Environmental Policy was also uh, included uh, or involved. Uh, that's uh, the party uh, that was in charge of operation by contract. And now about the selection of uh, the participants, the, we send uh, the invitation to 4,500 uh, citizens who were randomly sampled. 
And then we received uh, the response uh, from 111 that showed interest in joining. Uh, that may uh, seems like a, that may seem like a rather small proportion, and yet we selected the 51 from them. And the publicity was something that was involved. Uh, that is in the case of meetings and conferences uh, that are held under the auspices of the city. And there is always a certain the quota, so to speak, uh, for the public participation. And that was a kind of tradition. And then we said that we would not take that approach. In other words, this time, we will only select members out of those that were randomly selected in order to represent uh, the the situation of the city uh, in such a way, we thought that uh, we should not uh, consider uh, the such traditional approach. And this shows uh, the demography. On the left is uh, the demography in the entire city, including the, the age group as well as where they are inhabited. We try to uh, select members so that they represent uh, the situation of uh, the entire city. And now the flow of the deliberation. There was one concern that is in Japanese. We often say that uh, who has a big say, who is most vocal, and they will lead the discussion. And that's what we were concerned about. Among participants, there are those uh, that know nothing about the environment who hesitate to speak in front of other people. There are such different uh, members there, and that may be true in other cities as well. So we decided uh, to go for group work because if the number of members in the group is uh, limited, and then uh, that would uh, make them feel more comfortable to speak. And therefore, in principle, we decided that the group work would be the way to move forward. And uh, we had uh, five sessions, and the themes were defined as such, selection of products, food, agriculture, energy, the housing, mobility, and local partnership collaboration. Those were the themes that were chosen for those six themes. First experts, local practitioners, and the city hall members were there to provide information because discussion has to be based upon an informed basis and to uh, focus on points of consideration. And information provision, that takes rather long time, yet the accurate, correct information has to be conveyed to the participants, and that is why we decided to take sufficient time for information provision. Once the work started, then the step one, and that is uh, to generate ideas. Number two, then try to identify issues that are associated with different ideas, proposals. Number three, solutions to those issues. And through those steps, the group work was performed. And then at the end, a group gave a presentation they were shared by all the members, and then we received questions uh, from the members and so on. We have to make sure that all the members would have the opportunity to speak up. So as in the case of uh, the rules uh, that would be typically found, not to interrupt, not to deny the other people's remarks, try to be succinct and listen to other people attentively by nodding and clap hands once uh, the remarks are finished to make it uh, the place of dialogue rather than the debate. Here are some snapshots. You know that the many Japanese are quite shy and therefore when strangers are gathered and then they hesitate to be engaged in conversation because of hesitation. So, 
we decided uh, to write down the points of remarks and to post it and then that will be placed on the board and uh, the owner of that uh, the remarks was there to explain because by writing down the points on the post-it then you can summarize and sort out organize your thoughts so that uh, you would uh, the not uh, digress and that would also lead to a the, the efficient the discussion and uh, then those they, the post-its post-it notes were collected and in fact uh, the there were more than 2000 posted meaning that there were more than 2000 proposals comments made by the members because uh, there were so many then we decided to classify them according to those uh, the the themes and then I try to come up with uh, 28 themes uh, that received uh, the, the most interest and then classify them into different categories. That is, the six categories, uh, they should be promoted strongly and to at least uh, promote it actively and then try to show the interest at the end on the part of the participants. Then we created the scatter diagram. The, this, uh, this shows the standard deviation on the, uh, the, the vertical axis uh, that shows uh, the dispersion of comments and then the, on the horizontal axis that shows uh, the, the level of support. The promoting bus uh, use, uh, for instance, uh, that received uh, less support or least support and uh, local produce to be locally consumed that received uh, the highest uh, support. As I said, uh, the result of deliberation should be reflected on policies by the city. In the case of Kurosawa City, the, the recommendations by citizens' assembly were actually uh, not produced uh, something that the, the recommendation that would uh, make a strong demand to the city that was not done. This may be quite controversial because if you try to draw a conclusion, then in that case, the minority uh, opinions may be ignored or discarded, or eventually that, that results in the ruling by majority. In fact, uh, the significance of the citizens' assembly is to uh, give uh, more weight onto the, the minority views and uh, the, when this is sponsored by the city and yet uh, this is entitled as the the recommendations by the citizen assembly uh, that is illogical and therefore we dare not to uh, bear a re recommendation as a conclusion and that resulted in enormous amount of work because in the absence of uh, recommendations i mentioned that there were two remarks meaning that all of them have to be incorporated in one way or another. And this is a booklet that shows uh, the action plan of uh, the global warming. And we try to match more than 2,000 uh, opinions uh, to uh, the action plan of Tokorozawa City to confirm. And then as a result, we try to identify where there are gaps uh, that are not covered by the basic plan and then try to come up with the suggestions to bridge or fill that gap. I'd like to explain about this illustration. For revision of the plan and reflection onto the ordinance, still the participants are not practitioners, they are not researchers. So to them, the significance of the impact, if it is incorporated into the policies, we thought that was not uh, clearly understood by the participants. That is why we decided to create this illustration. This is uh, to uh, visualize and share the result of discussion based upon the comments by all the members. So the student of Western University first uh, uh, draw the draft and then the that was improved. And I think this is well designed carbon neutrality by 2050, that's where we are moving forward. 
and citizens as well as the members of the city hall, the administrators, could be encouraged and motivated to move forward. And here is a QR code for your information if you're interested in. Please uh, refer to the report that we produced. And also, by collaboration with the Waseda University, which is located uh, within uh, Tokorozawa City, we uh, intensify the collaboration and uh, partnership with them and hope that uh, this would uh, spread into other areas like uh, welfare and healthcare. And uh, the Zero Carbon Club, uh, the kind of association was created by Waseda University in Tokorozawa City. Uh, this was triggered by this, uh, the Climate Assembly. Uh, this is a new type of movement which was not expected in the beginning, and therefore we were quite surprised to see the uh, such a progress, and we hold the great expectation toward this act, the association's activities, and we want to support whenever that is pos uh, possible and necessary. I'd like to share with you my personal impression to conclude to realize that decarbonization it is essential to change a lifestyle yet in Japanese society, especially in the case of a rural city like Tokorozawa City, there are those people who don't want to change. And I would say that there will be a rather large number of people who resist to change. But exclude them, and that would result in divide that is not sustainable. Therefore, to those people who would not uh, prefer to change, in order to gain their understanding and support, the illustration that I showed you earlier about the future of Tokorozawa City, and that's what we'd like to share with them so that they will be motivated to move forward together with us. And in fact, uh, Climate uh, Assembly made a first step toward such a development. Every month on Sunday, Climate Assembly met and uh, the, the members were supposed to participate all those five sessions. And out of 51 members, there was no uh, one person uh, that dropped out. In other words, their awareness uh, was improved uh, every session that they experienced. And about this, uh, the Climate Assembly, that was a process of the trial and error. Can't say for sure whether that was a success yet. Uh, that was uh, supported by the uh, of City as well as uh, the uh, Waseda University and the Institute of uh, the Dialogue for Environment, and uh, they were engaged in the face-to-face -face discussion, and close communication resulted in such a uh, uh, illustration, which was not possible by the city alone. Listening to attentively to citizens and to work on new challenge together with the stakeholders and young members of the city hall. And that's what we learned out of this activity. We expect uh, the drastic uh, transformation of economy and society, and therefore the future may be even more challenging than now for young uh, administrators. This was a great opportunity for them to learn to prepare for future challenge. Professor Hiratsuka, Waseda University, and Mr. Yagishita, and Mr. Murakami of the Institute for Dialogue of Environmental Policy. Thank you very much for your contribution. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Saito, for that presentation. So the next presentation, so on the Atsugi Climate Assembly, We'd like to have Mr. Mutsuko Endo, Atsugi Citizens uh, Power Station, um, and heading the steering committee of the Atsugi Climate Assembly. Ms. Endo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for that introduction. I would like to report on the Atsugi Climate Assembly. 
I am Endo from the Atsugi Citizens Power Station. So first, I'd just like to introduce, um, if you allow, you can allow me to introduce ourselves. Uh, we have started activities six years ago. Uh, we are a group that has been working uh, to avert a climate crisis and achieve a society that is that does not depend on nuclear power. So we're taking on the challenge of citizen-led local production of renewable uh, energy for local consumption and revitalization of agriculture. Now, uh, this is a picture in 2020, that's before COVID. Uh, this is a power station uh, that lies on top of farmland. So this uh, is a system for sharing the uh, blessing of sunlight between agriculture and power generation. It is solar sharing or agri-solar. And so we'd be doing collecting farming. We'd be welcoming visitors. A power plant that has become a place of connection. Now, the crops. So... So there's a panel um, and the actual crop yield is higher because the moderate shade could be creating a favorable environment and could be ideal for agriculture in the age of global boiling. And we wanted to um, increase the number of this, but this is the only one that we have because there, it's uh, difficult to expand when there's no a benefit as it's uh, profitable or not. And the city is working on uh, the expansion of renewable energy, but it's not moving forward. And we wanted to uh, ignite the next step. And that was what we came up with two, about two years ago. So we looked at the climate uh, citizens assembly movement in other municipalities, and we uh, wanted to do that. Now, the Atsugi city um, was not able to do that, uh, was not able to host it, so they said that they were too um, busy. And But actually, there has been a citizen collaboration sort of project and uh, there has been regulations uh, that uh, enable the public participation in making up uh, these policies. So therefore, in order to realize the roadmap for uh, quiet uh, we decided to organize a climate assembly in Atsugi city. And as a result, uh, the Atsugi city uh, became more forthcoming, and they said that uh, they uh, would be accepting like the proposals uh, made from the climate uh, assembly. Uh, therefore, um, th it was adopted as a citizen collaboration project. So not just to avoid a climate crisis, but um, the objective is to create a prosperous and comfortable future for Atsugi. So, in about four months um, after it's been decided that we're actually going to hold this uh, climate assembly, we have this, uh, we've made this uh, framework, and uh, but uh, we've been fortunate uh, to have uh, the support as you can see here, and this is the framework of the climate assembly. Now, first on the funds, the financing there, uh, so, uh, we have been able to receive two million uh, again from uh, the city uh, collaboration efforts, um, but this, of course, this was not uh, enough. So the uh, in the end, the operation we were able to get about six point five million, yen. and and actually about last uh, last year, this time last year, uh, we were not sure whether we can actually receive uh, the finance and. We actually uh, had two scenarios under a, a good budget and, and not so. Um, we were actually able to uh, get the finance uh, to actually operate that. And since uh, this uh, was a uh, citizen collaboration, so the city was in charge of the random selection. And um, since uh, the city gave the legitimacy to this project, um, it sort of gave a sense of uh, security for the citizens to actually participate. But uh, those participating would be ordinary uh, citizens. Um, we had, we've been able to gain participants, but the 
uh, facilitation part. Um, of course, you need to know about the subject, but um, the facilitation skills, uh, the training sessions uh, were held so that people can actually facilitate that. Um, but what? Uh, but actually, uh, what was most useful was the support that we were able to get from IDIP. And also, as main facilitator, uh, Rasakhsan uh, has supported us through this effort. So this, the, so the selection, so random selection, so that was done by the uh, city, um, as was mentioned. And so we actually weighed those um, in low populated places. So we had 3,001, so random selection of 3,001 was reduced to 52, which reflects that, so like a, um, a microcosm of society. Uh, we did select those people who uh, were not necessarily interested in environment, so we were able to have more or less of a balance panel there. Um, we and uh, we had uh, a lot of supporting persons, such as experts and advisors, as well. And on the bottom is the steering committee. Again, these are just ordinary people, including students. And uh, that was how the uh, meetings were seen. So this is the schedule we started from June um, in a Sunday uh, afternoon, four hours up to uh, November. So first we uh, add so the orientation, the foundation information. Uh, we actually gain information that we still we can still get to um, uh, limit the climate uh, rising to 1.5 uh, degrees, and we. Um, had uh, Watam San from I just talk about uh, the climate warming. The second, um, to understand the Atsugi carbon neutral uh, roadmap, the vision for decarbonization 2050. Uh, so we had uh, that session. The third session was on the topics, uh, four topics on the basic approaches to the decarbonized society. We had experts uh, to lecture us in the fourth uh, session. So we had uh, two uh, separate there. So there were workshops uh, to get yes, him to uh, think that. And in the fifth session, we had a symposium on enhancing the action plan. And in the discussions, um, we actually made a uh, draft. And after the fifth session, uh, we um, worked on the, the, the basics or, or the actual draft of the proposal. And before the sixth session, uh, we made a preliminary uh, voting so that we can work on uh, the draft uh, proposal. And, and we made a final draft after the sixth session. And after that, uh, we voted on the draft. And based on that, uh, we've completed the draft and uh, we reported to the mayor at the end of last year. And on the right-hand side, so these were the special considerations when forming the Atsugi Decarbonization Action Plan in Atsugi. So these were what we mentioned. So it need to create a comfortable future for Atsugi. And the roadmap is quite, um, but uh, a, a sort of resolution that uh, we are actually going to realize this roadmap and it needs to be just and fair. And we need to create mechanisms that that enable even uninterested people to live normal uh, normally while transitioning to the decarbonized society. And it's important to mention that the citizens are the core or the actors of the action plan. So these were some pictures from the, the scenes from the meetings. So in the sixth meeting, so four, four themes, and we had uh, 74 action items, and we actually, um, and we actually saw a nice picture for Tokyo City. So we actually drew a picture so for, so that people can have a, uh, a better idea of the concept. 
and we asked for a volunteer and we actually had a, a person who was an illustrator cartoonist uh, so based on the action plan so and uh, putting it into an illustration or picture on on the action plan item so we were lucky to have those uh, so this is the action plan the report that we made compiled and there's also this you can see the pamphlet uh, to actually um, deliver to people so that uh, with the picture in the middle and we believe that this would be very useful in uh, spreading this idea so that it takes for and so at the end of the climate assembly made uh, uh, my action plan um, and announce that. So what is important for, for that person? Uh, so to have ownership and uh, to actually support your own behavior and change behavior change. So you can see everyone um, seeming happy and proud here. And I think uh, Ms. Inela mentioned this as well. So this is the overview of the questionnaire results, a reflection on the assembly. So there are about 95% who said that uh, they were good, that they, they were happy that they participated, and also the satisfaction on uh, the uh, the proposal, the 75%. And here, you can actually see before assembly and after how people's perception changes. So the question was, I'm clearly aware of what initiatives and measures should be implemented in daily life and the community towards achieving a decarbonized society. So before the assembly, it was only about 20%. Um, so they thought that they only about 20% uh, agree. But after the assembly, it's close to 70%. And actually, uh, before, somewhat disagree uh, was about off and which is reduced to something like 2%. So you can see the change in people's perception and understanding there. And also the action towards realizing a dark decarbonized society. Uh, you can see that uh, more than half uh, wishes to participate. And so participating in something that is uh, supported by uh, the local government or also participation uh, in work by business and and also in organizations and NPOs. And some, uh, we still do need to have to an exercise to reflect on the overall uh, activities, uh, but there, these are some reflections uh, by the, the supervisor team. So this, there's a lot of trial and error. So there's a lot of things that we need to, that we, we learned um, and improved moving forward. So there are people who are saying that due deliberation may not have been achieved. And also um, pe some people thinking about the quality and the quantity of the information provided. And also there were some uh, reflections on the process from the uh, sharing group, from sharing group discussion contents. And there's some operational issues on the, for the steering committees. Review. Lastly, this is um, what we're doing towards uh, the next proposal or what we're doing there. So for we made a report and we'd be issuing that. So actually, uh, we did a briefing session in February 17. And so those uh, citizens who participated and the staff, so those um, who were involved in the climate assembly, they actually talked, uh, they mentioned their intention to wish to continue to participate. And this, while well, this is part of the action plan, so one is continuation of the citizen collaboration. So section five is initiative to actualize, practice, and establish the Atsugi decarbonization action plan. So number one is a continuation of citizen collaboration. Um, in order to uh, to take concrete st steps to Atsugi Decarbonization Action Plan. So we actually have that uh, in place. And, and uh, so actually as a new collaborative entity, uh, we propose to launch uh, the Carbon Neutral Atsugi Future Project. And uh, we will uh, have, we will 
move this forward. So first uh, is to have the citizens more recognize the Atsugi Decarbonization Action Plan, and we're thinking of an organization to actually implement that. Uh, we're now in a preparatory stage, and uh, we intend to uh, start uh, activities uh, from uh, April onwards. So uh, those um, so there are about uh, 20 people who have raised their interest in participating in this as we move forward. And for Atsuki City, it is led by the citizen and it is a collaborative effort between the citizen and uh, the city. And, and that is the feature of our activities. So, and those who are participating the citizens participating and the staff, um, they've been able to closely uh, collaborate. So in that sense, uh, the the actions to further uh, movement, is, the, the hurdle is uh, lower. And I think that would be the strength of our activities as we move forward. So it was a, a challenge at the citizen level, but with the support and the guidance of many people, we have been able to manage to achieve some results and we deeply appreciate everyone's con uh, support. And so those paving the way to the future have begun to act. Um, we're sure there would be a bumpy road ahead, but we'll continue to rise to the challenge. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Endo. Next, we will hear from Kanagawa Climate Assembly and Zushi Ayama Steering Committee member, the chair. Uh, Mr. Kato, over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, let me present Kanagawa Climate Assembly in Zushi Hayama. Uh, we've been working for the past one year, so I am very happy that I have this opportunity to report what we've been undertaking. And before I start reporting about our activities, let me explain about Zushi City and Hayama Town, the location that we conducted activities. Uh, we are located next to Tokyo, the capital of Japan, and in Miura Peninsula in Kanagawa Prefecture. Uh, we are faced with Gulf of Sagami. There are so many touristic um, sightseeing spots, and it's very close to Tokyo, less than two hours uh, travel. So this is very popular as a red bedroom town. Zushi and Hayama are next to each other, faced with ocean, a very moderate, a good temperature. However, there are different features of these two cities. One, Zushi City, there's a four train stations within the city, so there is a very good access to the metropolitan area, Hayama. There is no train station, therefore uh, you get out at Zushi and take the bus to Hayama. That is the typical way to access it to Hayama. Uh, therefore, there is very much traffic congestion in order to the decarbonization of the local community. Um, so the status of the transportation was one of the major factor. Let me come back to talk about this later. Uh, next is the features of the Kanagawa Climate Assembly in Dushi Hayama. Um, Dushi Hayama, uh, next to each other, there are many similarities. However, at the same time, there are some differences. So these are the two communities that activities were conducted. Dushi Hayama, uh, anti-global warming action plan were formulated and we wanted to deliver the opinion of the citizens. So that was one of the objectives set forth in this climate assembly. When formulating the policy for the community that you live in, uh, it is really motivating for the citizen uh, that your voice will be reflected into the policy. It's rewarding if that is materialized. And IDEP, from Kanagawa Prefecture was consigned to work on the same project, but as for the Kanagawa Prefecture, uh, they deployed the program for the citizens dialogue so that this can spread to cover other uh, localities. And so fair and just operations have to be ascertained. Therefore, various uh, stakeholders 
were called upon to formulate the steering committee. Uh, therefore, under their responsibility uh, of the planning as well as the operation um, have been held in the assembly. And also, I just is located uh, in Kanagawa Prefecture. Therefore, a 1.5 degrees of life uh, challenge, which was formulated by I just, uh, take up the challenge that is close to uh, your living and to undertake the lifestyle change. So the collaborations with the I just. It was very instrumental. This was made a proposal by the IDEP, which is located in the same community, and we could undertake this activity thanks to the good collaborations with Hayama and Zushi. Uh, 3,300 individuals randomly selected from the basic resident. Just as we're called upon, and we have stratified them based upon the interest in the environment, gender, age, and so forth. We try, try to come up with the right balance to create the macro space and of the actual uh, resident. Uh, there are some people who did not have much knowledge about the climate, uh, therefore asked for how to proceed with the climate assembly. But first of all, decarbonization and climate change, basic knowledge needs to be first of all provided um, so that we can first of all establish the good foundations and to exchange views. So that was the initial, what we have done. Next is number two. Well, the participant participants have to take this as your own issues, so that we make sure to share the awareness among participants patients. And also, we should focus on certain priority topics. We narrow down on the topics. And number four, against those narrow down topic, uh, in depth discussions and dialogue uh, took place. And number five. Uh, we aggregate the dialogue outcomes and also uh, took the voting by the participants and the proposed items and <clears throat> pick up the ones that received the highest support and then came up with a citizen proposal. Well, we assign a group of facilitator, and there's five or six people in each group. Now, as for the type of information provided, well, first of all, uh, Expertise knowledge was provided by the experts and take, for example, the mobility taking operations was involved and also for housing and energy. And Nakata, who is a local player in the construction area, was involved or I just also <clears throat> provided some explanation. And or we use related a uh, company uh, was involved or the fashion apparel or companies was also involved in the manufactured good and for food the food bank uh, kanagawa as far as the uh, common which is the rental service and for uh, the used items uh, were also involved these are the practitioners who shared very interesting points and meeting primarily was held on saturday afternoon and uh, we held uh, five meetings um, between July and December. I said that uh, five meetings were held. What was the basic idea has been just explained? And this is the overall process, as you can see on the diagram. Now, the citizen proposal was compiled, and on the 15th of December, uh, we presented that to the mayor of Hayama, and on 18th of December, presented it to Dushi mayor. And from uh, Dushi, uh, it was created by the randomly selected citizens, so that in itself is meaningful. And also on the 12th and 14th of February, a review meeting were held. In other words, everyone got together to review what they've been doing. And also the follow-up activities uh, were also discussed. Uh, we solicited those willing to participate in the follow-up and activities and volunteers uh, would participate in the future follow-up activities. Now, let me take you through each steps along with the process. The first uh, meeting was held on July 8th. The basic information on decarbonization climate change was provided and also uh, to lay the foundations for the information stage was done and also there was the lecture by expert Q&A session followed and also objective as well as the way 
the proceeding uh, were explained and consensus was generated. The second was held on August 8th. Participants uh, have to understand the issue as one's own issue, such as the decarbonization as well as the climate change. I just introduced over the 1.5 uh, degrees lifestyle program. This program is encouraging the behavioral change of the citizens of the greenhouse gas emissions. And with the help of the expert through the hands-on experience, um, visualize the outcomes so from your daily life uh, to bring about a considerable decline in the greenhouse gas and what behavioral change is required in order to achieve the target. Uh, this is a program to initiate uh, all the subsequent changes. The participating citizens uh, would consider which challenge that will, they will take up as on decarbonization actions and also at respect of home, they have uh, implemented in two week a challenge at home. And this is decarbonization challenge that took place during the month of August. As shown on the right hand side, what specific challenge took place? I think, for example, ride sharing, eco driving, and or to have a double pane window at home. This requires some investment, but some undertook this challenge. Now, from 6th to 19th of August, decarbonization actions that people were challenged. Well, 57 actions and five sectors was presented, and 34 persons participated. And from 12th of August to 3rd of September, in the two weeks period, and they actually implemented the decarbonization challenge that they have selected. And by 3rd of September, the result of the decarbonization result was presented by the IGES as a result of the questionnaire survey. And they have summarized the result. Third, questions on the 23rd of September. September, there was a review of the decarbonization's lifestyle change, uh, identified issues, and in the fourth session, what shall be the theme that ought to be focused on? Mobility, housing, food consumption, as well as manufactured good waste and sharing. These are the themes selected. And for we also took the questionnaire survey for the topics that they are willing to participate, and we divided the participants into the different groups. The next session took place on the 28th of October, four sessions, in order to have a deep discussions on the selected topic. Uh, we spent uh, the full day, but there was the time restraint, so not everyone cannot participate participate in all the themes. So. So the breakup session, the workshop one is the food and mobility, workshop two is the manufactured food and housing energy. And the practitioners, experts provided the information as well as identify some of the issues after which the discussion took place. And also the citizens' a proposal draft that was formulated mainly by the secretariat and also as is shown on Right, the secretariat have to make sure that the voices of the participants is reflected into the proposal. There were four participants and volunteers who checked whether the voices is fairly reflected. The final fifth session uh, took place on the 2nd of December. As for the citizen's proposal a draft, uh, there was the general sessions um, for over the four topics. And there were some topics we could not cover within these four topics, so there are some cross-cutting issues. Um, there was a discussion, and also a review was made. And on the 7th uh, of uh, December, uh, we sent the final draft to participating citizens and narrowed down to a little over 100 proposal items. And seven level of support uh, was made in the form of voting. And on the 14th of December, based upon the voting result of the 35 persons, 94 proposal items that gained the highest support 
uh, what the core of the citizens' and proposal that was formulated, and the citizens' proposal uh, was presented to Hayama Mayor as well as the district mayor, and at the same time, Kanagawa Prefectural Government an office a press a conference uh, took place on the 9th of December. I talk about the voting by the citizens, and this is what we have done. After the fifth session, the final uh, draft of citizens' proposal, there were 102 items. Um, people expressed their support level for each item, and the scale for evaluation uh, is a seven should be promoted, and score of one is should not be promoted. So it was a, a level of scale evaluation. And those gaining majority of the support uh, included in the proposal. However, those who did who did not receive the majority of the response that was also indicated as a reference. Uh, what are some of them? And take, uh, for example, um, to limit on the entry of train stations during morning or e evening hours, or to adopt daily time uh, in a city or in town. But from a feasibility point of view, uh, these are the items that did not obtain much support. However, uh, this may indicate some fundamental issues in the local community. Uh, therefore, we believe that this is a uh, um, very important uh, opinion that worthwhile and needs to be reviewed. And these are the examples of the proposed items. Please take a look at these different items. More detailed information is disclosed in, on the website. On the 27th of December, two of the citizens participated. Uh, we asked them to cooperate uh, in the questionnaire survey on the activities that was uh, conducted. Uh, but, uh, but people were not very responsive. Uh, therefore, we have to extend the um, due date to the 21st of January. And 80% of the uh, questions were similar to Atsugi Assembly questions. And this questionnaire survey, the 24 persons um, did respond. The response rate was 61.5%. Are you willing to participate in the activities from the um, citizens' proposal, and 16 out of 24 responded yes. And we were to hold the next session. However, we have to report to the city council of so calls. And meticulous explanations has to be provided to the citizens, and after which uh, there has to be the follow-up to be made in inclusive of the subsequent uh, discussion. And on the 12th of February, as well as on the 14th, uh, we held the review meeting. And the theme here is to review the six months of activities, and also we should lead this to the future. To materialize the citizens and proposals, there was the sessions to exchange views, and also we solicited the participations into the follow-up activities. As a result, 12 persons consented to be registered to the follow-up activities. And also there were uh, some willing to participate and from the steering committee, <clears throat> about 50 people would participate. IDEP will provide the support uh, in the meantime uh, when the preparatory work will be underway. We will continue to exchange views so that we can come up with a consensus of the way forward and what shall be the name of the team, who shall be the representative. And there will be the further discussions to follow. And as an activity in the local community, I hope that uh, we can further grow our activities. Hearing and committees uh, sincerely wish that we will see the further uh, spread. Uh, this concludes my report on from and Hayama. Thank you very much, Mr. Kato. Next, we have with us speaker on Climate Assembly Tsukuba 2023. This is going to be presented by Mr. Tokuda of Universitas Tsukuba. 
Good morning. On behalf of the design uh, uh, operation working group, Tokuda, uh, myself, is going to share with you the climate assembly Tsukuba. Uh, I'm from Unibosh, that's Tsukuba, that's a small citizens group, and uh, I am supposed to have 15 minutes. And uh, it appears that uh, not much time is left. And therefore, we, as a facilitator, I try to uh, speak uh, the, the, and uh, very fast speed so that uh, the, we can finish on time. But uh, this time I was told that uh, I don't have to speed up that much. But I'm sure you are quite exhausted. Uh, please stretch your body and hope that uh, you would bear with me for another 15 minutes. So with that, I'd like to begin my report. The outline characteristics and the result are going to be presented. First of all, the introduction of the climate assembly Tsukuba. Tsukuba is located about one hour train ride from Tokyo. Now, based upon findings and knowledge, expertise from other areas, we wanted to realize the best climate citizens assembly with that, uh, we started uh, designing uh, the assembly and uh, the, the the two other best practice. Uh, this took place uh, on six sessions from September to December last year and randomly selected 50 members uh, of 50, 16 years or older. And the steering committee uh, was uh, the organizer uh, together with Tsukuba City AISD, National Institute of Advanced Technologies uh, or rather Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, National Institute of Economic Studies, then took by uh, university. And the goal uh, for us is what uh, citizens and city can do or need to do in order to realize zero carbon in 2050. And the outcome was supposed to be produced uh, after six meetings. That is prior to uh, the recommendation, whether that is convincing enough before the members of the assembly that uh, this would realize zero carbon and easy living environment uh, to be compatible. And this is convincing and supported by those citizens who are not there so that they're willing to implement. And uh, the in the first uh, the meeting, we tried to come up with a common image about the zero carbon and easy living uh, Tsukuba city. And then three themes uh, were chosen for discussion from the second to the fourth meeting. And number five, that's about uh, the draft uh, proposal. Number six, the defining or finalizing the recommendation. And about the characteristics, I would say the from one to four, those are the characteristics before it the actual assembly met. And number five to number seven, this is after the assembly met. First about design, we conducted uh, the case studies on the other cities where such uh, climate assemblies were formed. In Unibelosita Tatsukuba spent 18 months uh, to look at uh, 17 cases uh, in Japan. And then together with the uh, the NIS, the National Institute of Economic uh, Environmental Studies, rather, uh, the, they were there to give us uh, the basis, uh, the basic information for discussion. And in July 2022, the Tsukuba Citizens Network was involved. The day organized a trial meeting by so randomly selecting participants. And based upon that, uh, the meeting was designed in such a way. The second characteristics, uh, that's about the commitment made to the participants. We'll make sure that the result would be actually uh, reflected on the policies or measures. So the question uh, that uh, I introduced to you earlier, uh, which was presented to the participants, we are going to do as such as citizens, and therefore we turn to the city, and then city is also expected to take uh, various measures, such as uh, the basic plan on development, and when 
those plans are to be revised and then the result of discussion be reflected on that and then we received the response uh, which was quite encouraging all of them are going to be looked into it doesn't mean that all of them would be adopted but in case they were not adopted and then the reason would be also given why they were not adopted now based upon that commitment we move on to the process of choosing the participants according to the new democracy foundation in australia uh, they aim for creation of mini publics and in order to make mini publics uh, they state that if you want to make an assembly of 50 members and then there has to be uh, the 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 5000 uh, the, the invitations to be made and then the 10 times more uh, should be the candidates and in fact i've received uh, the positive uh, responses from more than 500 people in japan and there is what is called the three percent barrier for the acceptance but in our case those who accepted stood at 11 percent and there may be various reasons but one of them may be uh, the honorarium that is paid globally i would say 10,000 yen might be a good reward to be paid, but in the case of Japan, that's about 3,000 yen. And uh, that will be uh, paid in the form of prepaid card. But every time we paid 6,000 yen per meeting with smile, and then if uh, they finished up all the uh, sessions, and then they also received the souvenir on top of that. That might have been quite effective. And also, we gave uh, very support, including uh, the, the need for caregivers, as well as uh, the, the the nursing uh, nursery type of facility. And also, uh, we try to create uh, this invitation as attractive as possible. And the fourth characteristics this is what i try to emphasize most that is many publics that has to be the miniature of the city and therefore that's what we aim for but frankly speaking on the part of the sponsor the government the they try to eliminate uh, activists who are vocal and uh, the the mini publics are maybe used as an excuse, but uh, that's not the way we should move forward. And therefore, joined the mini publics, we wanted to uh, create a relationship with uh, the local community. That is, in addition to those that were randomly selected, we also asked for those who are willing to participate on a voluntary basis. That is, we asked for ideas. Uh, that would be sent by citizens. Actually, what we wanted to do was uh, the Ireland and Scotland, uh, the citizens' assemblies for the diversity, uh, I mean, the, the biodiversity and environment. Uh, the, in the case, uh, that was in the form of the school children's participation. In our case, we wanted to do that, but uh, we could not do it uh, entirely, but we tried to incorporate at least a part of the uh, youth opinion by taking advantage of the summer vacation. So those are the characteristics uh, before uh, or in the preparation stage. Now, once uh, the assembly started, I'd like to explain how uh, the, this was uh, implemented. First, in the learning stage, Tsukuba City is known for the 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 various uh, laboratories and uh, national institutes that are located there, that gives us an advantage and therefore why not uh, making best use of them? Therefore, we decided to invite uh, experts, the plural experts for different themes. And as you see here, from different uh, institutions and uh, laboratories, we invited experts. The second, that's about deliberation. This may sound like somewhat an advertisement of myself, but uh, we consider facilitation is important. Therefore, uh, with the good facilitation, uh, we can realize inclusion and diversity and prevent 
uh, the 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 bias or the lopsided to a particular direction. And thus, facilitator team was created, which consisted of uh, very experienced members, and the overall uh, 21 sessions were held uh, every other week uh, to make best use of the uh, expertise uh, that could be found here. And uh, lastly, about the voting, I consider that uh, there are different approaches taken. And of course, simple majority is not the way to go. Uh, and you must agree with that. But uh, we wanted to create a voting method that can embody the support by uh, the, the members. So from number two to number four, we uh, cast a vote uh, by way of attaching uh, stickers. And those that received uh, more voting, they were selected in the fifth session. And then we asked uh, for their opinions, whether they support or uh, the abstention or the the, the rather the uh, the refrain refraining from making uh, the, the particular position and opposition, uh, because we thought with that uh, there will be the way for uh, the making uh, those people who uh, the refrain from uh, the casting the affirmative vote uh, to the more supportive side, and then uh, we conducted. Uh, the voting in the seven steps. Uh, this is based upon the what is practiced in the Washington uh, University in the US. And uh, seven steps, that means strongly agree, agree, and so on. And then the weight would be given uh, to those positive votes. That is uh, the, the first condition that has to be supported by 80% more people. That are the number two, if the average score was 1.75 or more, then that will be included in the recommendation. And as a result, 74 proposals out of 87 were adopted. The, here is an example of those supported by 98% of the people. You can refer to the website to see the actual recommendation report. In fact, we received a wide range of uh, recommendations and uh, proposals. And also we conducted a questionnaire survey that is according to the outcome. To what extent outcome was achieved? That was the main question. That is uh, whether uh, the proposal, the recommendation reflected your views and thoughts, whether the recommendation reflected the views and thoughts of the participants, whether zero carbon and easy living Tsukuba are compatible uh, with such proposals and whether this could be supported by uh, the people who are not here and whether you strongly support that uh, the recommendations be implemented. And in fact, all the members chose the three points or more. And therefore, I would say that uh, the, the outcome was satisfactory to all the members. We have not yet uh, uh, that concluded all the results, but uh, I'd like to share with you the commitment made by the mayor. The mayor committed beforehand that all of them are going to be implemented. But uh, when he received uh, the recommendation, then he committed that the roadmap is going to be created for all those 74 recommendations. So it's a one step move, moving forward. I know so. Uh, the department within the city hall that is in charge of environmental policies, they decided that they would advance the revision of the action plan one year compared to the uh, originally scheduled uh, the starting year. On the website soon, the detailed report is going to be uh, uploaded and hope that uh, you would refer to that uh, the report that you can see on the website. This concludes my report on Climate Assembly Tsukuba. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Tokuda. So we would like to ask for the next presenter to come. So it will be case studies of climate citizens assemblies in the UK. So we have uh, 
myself and uh, Hainuma uh, from IGES. So thank you very much. I am Kainuma from Institute for Global Environmental Strategies. So thank you very much for this opportunity to make a presentation in this practical workshop for climate citizens assemblies. And we've had Professor Elstab um, uh, present um, of what's taking place around uh, climate assemblies in uh, Europe and the UK. And so the presentation about uh, the UK was made on climate assemblies. And so from my side, just like to provide an overview, or actually uh, we conducted some interviews and uh, we had an interview with Professor Elsab in 2022 and 2023, and we'd like to present our findings from the interviews. And so it's like, a, so you're all practitioners, so it's like uh, preaching the choir. Um, and I ha I'm not a practitioner myself, uh, but um, so, so I am a bit worried whether I can um, uh, present myself clear enough, uh, but I'll just like to move forward. So what we're going to talk about uh, today would be uh, climate citizens assemblies and juries in the UK, characteristics of citizens assemblies and juries in the UK, and also talk about the impacts of citizens assemblies and juries. Actually, so there is a um, association called uh, Involve um, um, in Scotland, uh, involved in uh, climate assemblies and uh, as, um, the, who has experience in operating these assemblies. And I asked her what would be the tips um, to make a good presentation. Uh, what she mentioned is that uh, you should start off from presenting what we're going to talk about and close uh, with what uh, we're going to, what we have talked about. Uh, so uh, with that, I have made my presentation material based on the three points uh, that I've just uh, mentioned of what we're going to talk about today. So, with that, so with the Climate and Citizens Assemblies juries in the UK, talking about that, as was uh, mentioned by Professor Elsab, there are a lot uh, that have taken place. And in the UK, there are Climate Citizens Assemblies and juries, but using the word a jury, it conjures images of trial or court juries in Japan. So in uh, Japan, you don't use the word juries, so usually it is referred to as a citizen's assembly or a citizen's climate uh, assembly. And uh, this chart uh, was made uh, based on the data uh, from Kanoka, and uh, you can actually see that the um, for UK, and you can see the climate citizens uh, in black and the juries in red. And in boom, you can see on the bottom, uh, so you can see in the website uh, that talks about uh, these climate citizens assemblies and they talk about community assemblies as well. And uh, there are about a meeting of about 50 uh, people. And so out of a thousand, uh, there's participants of 50. So it does reflect or represent uh, the community. And, and actually uh, those who would be participating would be um, from 25 to 150, but it's out of um, so how big the community is would uh, be different and that would uh, change how it's uh, reflected. Now, talking about the UK uh, Climate Citizens Assembly, and uh, it, it took place from uh, January to May of 2020, and Involve um, actually uh, operated uh, this. And in the area of mobility, in-home purchase, uh, land use, food, and agri agriculture, there are three groups. And and also on energy, uh, there was a discussion with the whole group. But the issue around having discussions in three groups, and actually those groups actually um, compiled the recommendation. Uh, therefore, there was an issue around representation because um, 
it was mentioned that only one third uh, was represented for the recommendation for the prospective uh, groups. So there, people said that there could be issues in representations, but it is necessary to uh, divide into groups. And so basically in France, you have different groups, but actually um, have a discussion amongst everyone so that um, uh, everyone is represented in the recommendations uh, that are made. And it's very important to have people understand the objective of the uh, the Citizens' Assembly. And, and actually, um, this was made by sending things like evaluation forms to see whether people actually understood that. And the concept of net zero, um, I'm sort of familiar of that because I heard of it uh, a lot. But to actually have the citizens understand the concept of net zero uh, was a, a challenge itself. So we had uh, people like the secretariat and also the experts uh, to discuss before um, um, making a presentation or session there. So actually, we had separate sessions, several sessions talking about this concept of net zero. And in order for people to participate and have an active discussion, it's very important um, to have a good facilitation. And in the UK uh, Climate Citizens Assembly, the facilitator was done by people from involved. And for the other assemblies or the other uh, conferences, they usually have as facilitators, um, there'd be a staff from Involve and also a network of professional facilitators. But sometimes there's a budget issue. You, you can't sort of pay for the professional facilitators. And also there may be issues where municipalities want to do it in-house or on their own. Uh, you, those groups or those uh, municipalities uh, would actually nurture people who could do a uh, facilitation. And also data protection is a very important issue. In the UK, uh, you have a general data protection regulation. So it is uh, done um, uh, with due respect to the protection of data. And at the end, um, of course, um, you ask the participants whether uh, the data or the information uh, could be disclosed and make sure that one can actually voice their reservation on um, disclosing uh, information. So uh, there were people who were against having their information or say their photos being disclosed. And so and so in cases where people didn't want their photos taken, we had them in a, a single group so that uh, they wouldn't be in, um, in the photo or whatnot. And uh, so, so uh, Things like that was uh, made. So, and the uh, Climate Citizens Assembly took place. Those now on the the next uh, talking about Scotland Climate Citizens uh, Assembly. So, actually, this was uh, uh, based on uh, so the Climate Change Act. So. Um, that was what the space on. So in Scotland, uh, there is what we call a national performance framework, and it functions as different initiatives of the government. Now, this national performance framework aims to uh, create a, a successful uh, country uh, through enhancing the well-being of people and also having a sustainable, comprehensive economic growth, giving opportunities to people. And in 2011, so that, uh, so there was, um, uh, was stipulated uh, in that, excuse me, in 2015, uh, there was a Community Empowerment Act that was made. And the Scotland government is part or a member of the Open Government Partnership and for, each and every initiative, uh, they're um, engaged in making it open, transparent, and having the citizens' participation. And in Scotland, uh, there is a participatory uh, budget, and 
And so basically there are, um, uh, so um, in order to uh, achieve the targets under the national uh, performance uh, framework, uh, that uh, a lot of authority is powers uh, given to the people. And in Scotland, uh, from uh, November of 2019 uh, to November of 2020, there was a uh, citizens' assembly discussing the issue of uh, Brexit. And actually, the climate assembly was held after that. And so in Scotland, so it might not uh, necessarily be on uh, climate uh, change, but there are a lot of initiatives that allow uh, the people uh, to be uh, involved in that. And uh, that is Brexit there. And for the Scotland Climate Citizens Assembly, actually, um, there was a uh, children's um, assembly as well, um, which actually uh, was held to reflect the opinions of children between the age of seven and 15. And so basically, um, uh, the, the elective representatives um, having an opportunity to listen to uh, children's opinion as, as young as uh, age seven, and that is um, that is a system that's in place, and I, I and is expected that or hope to see more of that. And next would be on the Camden uh, Climate Citizens Assembly. This was actually the the first uh, Climate Citizens Assembly that was held, and uh, we didn't have any interviews with those there, but there was a. A citizens panel as a proposal. So uh, basically, the citizen, so what they could do as a community and what the Camden city could do was made was made as a proposal. And uh, the, the request was actually to have a citizens uh, panel. And so so it so in Camden city, they actually periodically have a Climate Citizens Assembly there. And so it was like two years from uh, 20. And so it's ongoing. Um, and it is planned for the third session as well. And the reason why I became interested in the citizen panel, uh, because my specialty is in energy on the calculation model and do scenario development there. And but even if you make the scenario, who actually implements that uh, would be citizens, and that is and how that should be done is something that I've been uh, working on and thinking about. And and in the UK, um, uh, Professor Pai in London University, uh, I heard that he was involved in the citizens panel. And actually, Professor Pai is a specialist in the uh, energy model for the UK, and he mentioned that he was uh, interested in um, reducing the on the demand side, and that made me interested as well. And Professor Pai's scenario, so that has been presented to the citizen and receiving, uh, and after receiving feedback, uh, the scenario has been uh, rewritten. So there's been. Uh, an iteration uh, there. And that, I think, uh, is something uh, that would actually show and reflect uh, the people's opinion there. Now, for Oxford Climate Citizens Assembly, uh, this assembly in Oxford, well, the initial budget was at 200,000 pounds. About half of that was paid to Ipsos Amori, the organizer, as a commission. The rest is paid to as an honorarium honoraria to the members. Ten thousand yen is the amount of honoraria paid to Tukuba City. Three hundred pounds per person was paid, which seems to be a fairly high amount seen from the Japanese perspective. Compared to other cities in UK, the amount seems to be fairly high for Oxford. And the 
numbers of the participants seems to be fairly large and there i was told that active discussion took place why they decided to outsource to ipsos mori in order to formulate the mini public uh, it was necessary to contract out to the organizations that have the expertise and also in order to avoid the bias um particularly the representation and to avoid any of the criticism coming from the citizen they decided to outsource and if they are to implement with a smaller budget uh, then the local government might have played a bigger role the person in charge of oxford uh, tura san made such comment the oxford climate citizens assembly uh, to create the action plan for the upcoming five years and try to secure the budget and also they try to enhance the measures against the climate change and they have made a big contribution as assembly so it was much significant it is important to consider the balance between knowledge sharing and the time spent on the deliberations i'm sure that you have the same issue how much time shall be spent for information provision how much time should be spent for deliberation it's case by case of course it is important to present information however if you spend too much time on that then you don't have much time left for the deliberations so this can always be the issue particularly during the planning stage another point even though it is the lower size there is the citizens jury taking place at oxford in the field of healthcare well there is a global center of healthcare and urbanization at oxford and two times a year one hour public seminars uh, is held by the University of Oxford uh, during this uh, seminar. Uh, well, this discussion led to a climate and health and project, and funding was provided uh, from the University of Oxford. Street Voice is a medium available at Oxford. This is something similar to the social media and through such media, the outcome, the result of the discussions was spread to the wider audience. Now, what are some of the characteristics of the citizens assemblies? I'm sure that you're well aware, uh, randomly selected citizens makes up the assembly and they are stratified by age, area of residence, opinion, incomes. And so there are the stratification factors that is being applied. And the numbers of the members ranges from 25 to 150 in the typical case. And the meetings are often held about six times in a year. Well, participants learn the latest knowledge through the lectures by several experts, not just the experts as you have heard during the morning, the stakeholders, the people concerned, the citizen side, not necessarily the expert who serves as a practitioner, uh, would also provide information. In the citizen jury from Oxford, there are some restraints on the traffic. Take, for example, you should not take certain such road, or the cars is prohibited to enter into certain streets. But however, ambulance can always have to have an access, and therefore, drivers of the ambulance uh, was called upon to hear what they have to say. So the version discussions are held among the participants, a professional facilitator often supports the discussion, and also the policy recommendations are made. This is one of the key characteristics of the Citizens' Assembly. But this leads to the behavioral change among the participants will lead to the increased citizens trust in government why so many climate citizens assemblies are being held in the uk in many of the local communities in uk they made a net zero declaration similar here in japan many of the japanese local government has made a net zero declaration in order to resolve the issue 
the consent and support of the local citizens uh, is necessary. Therefore, the citizens' recommendations are reflected into the action plan. And also, the understanding of the citizens is another major objective. Uh, we are inundated with information, however, uh, accurate information based on the society uh, is very important. Now, objective of holding the citizens' assembly will first of all present it, and also easy to understand explanations is given by the expert, followed by the deliberations among the citizens to deepen their understanding. And then the proposal is being developed. Now, enhancing the awareness and understanding of the general public is also very important. So through the internet or before, during, after the assembly, the organizers uh, would solicit the input, uh, the opinions using the internet. And that happens very often. Now, uh, with the uh, media coverage of the interest that we can be increased. Now, impact of the citizens' assembly. Uh, there are three areas where we can see the impact uh, policy, society, and democracy. Uh, take, uh, for example, reflected into the policy or in the people's understanding, and also by providing the venue for discussions. Um, you can gain the knowledge or you can increase the activism of the citizens and also democracy. Uh, during the morning, there were some comments being made, representative democracy and alternative that can replace the representative democracy it was also taken up in France. Now, one of the shortfall of the indirect representative policy is that you can be short-sighted, um, place emphasis on the policy priority. Well, these are the opinions uh, that I heard uh, from outside of Japan, but similar thing can be said for Japan and impact both society, society and democracy, impact on the practice or impact on the thinking or back to the capacity building. In French Citizens Assembly, recommendation led to the Climate Resilience Act and in other locations, the opinions of the citizens are reflected into the action plan. So it's fairly influential from society point of view, it leads to the behavioral change of the citizens or the media coverage is also very important. And also uh, the response of the companies can also change the form of democracy. Uh, also needs to be uh, discussed. And let me summarize. One, Climate Citizens Assembly's juries in the UK, and also its characteristic as well as the impact. These are the three points that I briefly shared with you. Thank you for your kind attention.